We bring in Tim Legler now from what is known as the palestra of living rooms. Uh, Legs, this Celtics team <laughs> is exasperating. Like, they lose to the Pistons. They lose to the Wizards. They beat the Nuggets. They drop one of the Hawks. They blow a 20-point lead here. Uh, when it's that big, the, the first question comes to my mind, was there a meltdown from Boston? Was there a comeback by New Orleans? In either case, how did it happen? Yeah, look, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram made plays. They took over the game. But when you're up 24 points, if you're Boston, with six minutes left in the third quarter – to a mediocre to below average defensive team, you just can't lose the game. And for me, the game took a turn in the early fourth quarter when the Pelicans started hitting Jason Tatum with some blitzes out on the perimeter. He did his job in drawing two defenders. If you're a star player, this is all you can do. Bring two to me, let me occupy, get the ball out of there and play three on two in a weak side. You see Pritchard doesn't even attack those open gaps. They end up with a bad force three on that position. Here again, let me take two all the way to the sideline. Swings at the Daniel Tice, indecisive, end up with the guy that Pelicans want taking that three, Tice. Once again, you get him out at half court, the ball is swung, a bunch of indecision. On that possession, Tatum had to go chase it back down and take an off-balance three. So, for me, on a team that has supposedly three offensive players capable of taking over games and capable of beating defenses and, and uh, Jalen Brown and Kemba Walker alongside Tatum, that just can't happen. If you're Jason Tatum, you've got to be frustrated because you're doing everything you can. And when that ball gets rotated out, when you've drawn multiple defenders, somebody has to go attack a gap, get in and get somebody an open look or something easy at the rim. For me, they're not going to talk too much about that sequence tomorrow because the game went to overtime and there were a lot of plays to be made. But that's where it got away from Boston because even that stretch started with a 13-point lead with about nine minutes to go. You've got to close that out if you want to be taken seriously as a contender in this league, particularly with that much offensive talent. So for me, in a series full of bad losses for the Celtics, this mm -hmm. to me is the cherry on the Sunday. This is the worst loss of the year because of the lead they had against a team that wasn't playing well, was very frustrated, and is not a good defensive team to string together stops. You can't have that kind of a drought to allow a team back in the game. And eventually, their great offensive players took over. Zion and Brandon. Brandon okay. Ingram. So we're going to spread this around because if they have three great offensive players for the Celtics, I would, I would guess that Kemba Walker going 5 of 21 and 1 of 12 is not a great offensive performance. What was the trouble with him? Yeah, he, he's just not the same player to me, and it's frustrating because he, the physical tools are still there. But for whatever reason, since he came from Charlotte, he just hasn't been the same guy. I think he is caught in the dilemma most of the night. When can I go be an alpha the way that I was when I played for the Hornets? And I had to be. And when do I need a guy that be a guy that plays more like a point guard? I think he's in that in that purgatory offensively where he just doesn't know. So he's never in rhythm. It's very rare when Kemba Walker gets on one of those runs where he strings together three or four baskets and finds his flow on a given night. He absolutely killed him in this one because he had a lot of space on a lot of those misses, and he just was not able to make a couple of shots. And any one of those, John, by the way, can stop the momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, it only takes one bucket sometimes when a team is starting to make that comeback. You know, it's, it's nine, and you get a couple of open looks. That could have been 13, but instead now it's five on the other end. There are so many stretches like that in the course of a game, and I felt like Kemba Walker was involved in a lot of those in the second half, and he just was not able to come through for them. And it's really been a theme for him since he got to Boston. He just has not looked comfortable, and obviously he's also dealt with injuries. Boston now 15-15, and 15, and that's certainly not a record we thought we would see from them 30 games in. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.